Okay, good morning, everybody. Hi, it's good to see you. It's Monday morning, and you know what that means. We are going to get our jam going. We're going to get our mojo going. And uh, yeah, I have my tree up in the background. Jill was just uh, commenting on that. It's the holiday season. There are so many wonderful things and wonderful, um, I, I guess, things that we can be grateful for and feel blessed for, right? And then there's also lots of stuff that can just really get under our skin and that could possibly <laughs> aggravate us if we allow it and that we could find probably anything that we're willing to look for, we could find something to complain about, whether it's getting ready for the holidays or not really sure what the holidays are gonna look like this year, or if it's about you know something going on around us in our world and we can find probably any reason to complain. And I'm sure you've all met someone who has probably turned complaining into a sport and they're really good at it, right? Like they, they are just like at the top of their game when it comes to complaining. And uh, I'm sure that they've turned it into an art form, some people that you might know. And so I want to talk to you this morning about rethinking complaining and reprogramming yourself uh, to really think differently when it comes to looking at what's going on around you. And um, when we spend all of our time complaining, we're, we're in essence in destroy mode rather than in building mode. So if you're with me this morning and you wanna take some notes, um, you might wanna write that down that when we're in complaining mode, we're in destroy mode and we're not in building mode. And you know, I think that we all know that person or maybe more than one who can find fault with anything they choose to look for. And I, I mean, I don't know, maybe I'm even talking to one of you today. I know so many of you over the last several months have given me feedback as if to say, uh, or asked me, were you talking to me this morning? Um, so I could be talking to some of you. I, I'm more than likely talking to me as well when I do Monday Morning Mojo. Um, so I think that whatever we look for, we'll find. And if we want to find the problem in any situation, we'll find it. And so complaining, I've heard it said, is a garbage magnet. So again, if you're taking notes, that's a writer downer. Complaining is a garbage magnet. I mean, think about it. When you start complaining or when you find yourself around someone who is in that, in that loop of complaining, do you find people lining up to provide solutions often? No. No. See, here's the reason why. As human beings, we model behavior. Subconsciously, we model behavior. We mimic communication styles. Think about someone that you spend a lot of time with. Have you ever noticed that you've taken on some of their qualities? Some of their speech patterns, mannerisms, maybe a word that they use a lot, you find you're, you're using it too. Because we do model behavior and especially when it comes to speech, our subconscious, it, our brain wants to please us and it wants to work in the most efficient way possible. So if it finds a model and it thinks that you are going to work at a higher level with that, it's just going to mimic it. So when we find ourselves in a group of people or even just with one person who's complaining, we, we could be at risk for falling into that trap. And so I wanted to talk to you this morning about complaining because I think that complaining is the ability to see only the negative. And when we only see the negative, we're, we're limiting our options. We're creating toxicity in our lives. And we certainly can't get into solution mode. So you are going to find that not only are you limiting your options, you're limiting your experiences and you're stunting your personal growth. So when we look at complaining, it's one-sided because all we're looking at is the negative and there's always two sides to any situation. So if we are only focusing on what's going wrong and complaining, then we're missing the other opportunities or we're missing not only the opportunity to get it back on track or fix it, but we're missing the positive part of what's happening. Because I think that every negative um, reaction or situation is going to have a positive too. I mean, think about what's happened in 2020. 
you know, we could certainly list a lot of things that have been a struggle uh, with 2020. And yet, if I was to go around and ask enough of you, what are some of the opportunities that have shown up because of 2020? I know that you could probably list as many positive, wonderful uh, new things that have happened as a result of it. So with every negative outcome or negative situation, we can also find enough positive too. So when someone is focused on what's going wrong with either their life or the external world, um, then really they're spending all their time, and, and I'm just going to say this with a hug, but you're spending a lot of your time whining rather than focused on winning. So if you want to you want to title this, you know, let's stop whining and start winning. That's the topic for Monday Morning Mojo this morning. Let's stop whining and start winning. Um, now, here are a couple of things that I want to also point out. Um, when someone is in this loop of complaining, you know it's this person's way of acknowledging what's not working. When someone is complaining, they're, they're stating and they're acknowledging whatever's not working in their life, uh, whatever they're not happy with. And, and in a metaphorical way, when we complain or criticize, we're putting a lot of attention or a spotlight on what is wrong. And so we're tearing down any desirable outcome when we do that. When we focus on the solutions and the opportunities, then we can open ourselves up to creativity, we can change our energy, and we can start focusing on what the solutions might be. And you know, I know that there's been a lot of things we could find to complain about this year. Yeah, I, 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 at the end of the day, I'm just gonna put this out there to you. I don't think the world has ever been changed by someone's opinion. I believe the world is changed by our actions. So if you're complaining is gonna keep you from getting into action, which it will, because it's immobilizing, complaining is immobilizing, then the, the talk, right, the loop that you're on is not going to really spur any change it's just gonna attract more negativity to you because complaining is a garbage magnet. So when complaining starts to get contagious, right? Because now what happens is we start complaining or that person starts complaining and rather than us focusing on the solutions, we find other people start chiming in. Oh, well, if you think that's bad, let me tell you what happened to me yesterday. Or, oh, I know it's terrible and it just, if you don't allow, if you don't really protect your mindset, and if you don't work to really stay in that positive frame of mind, if you don't train your brain, then it's really easy for your subconscious to fall victim to other people's negativity. So the, the thing that I, I think is important is understanding how to avoid that, okay? So, because chronic complaining, honestly, it can change the way your brain is wired. That's why you find someone, you know, where any of us could probably look around our lives and say, you know, that person has been this way forever. Because the more we complain, it actually starts to rewire our brain and it creates you know, these, these new path, passageways, excuse me, in our brain. And so we're getting, we're getting programmed to just see the negative. We're programming our mind to always respond in that, in that way. Now, here's the good news. If you can find a way to subconsciously even program your thoughts and train your brain in one direction, then you can train your brain in a different direction. So the same way chronic complaining can create that response and can train our, our brain to find the negatives, find the problems, we can train our brain to be more results oriented and to find the opportunities. So when we look at doing just that, I think that a lot of the things we've talked about here on Monday Morning Mojo start to come into play, right? So how are you starting the day? How are you creating those thoughts to program you to look for the opportunities? And remember, 
you know, a positive person is not without problems in their life. A positive thinker is, is not someone who is void of, of challenge. A, a positive thinker is just someone who is going to not wallow in the negativity for long, right? Because I've, when I've had conversations around this before, or some of this topic has come into other leadership lessons or, or you know, talks that I've done, I've had the question come up about venting, right? So what about venting? Sometimes you just need to vent. Absolutely. And I totally understand that. You know, I had um, uh, something come up this morning. You know, um, I had a challenge show up in my email first thing this morning uh, that I... I vented. I certainly vented to myself. I certainly vented to my husband when he got up. Um, and then I said, okay, vent is over. And now I need to figure out what to do about it. See, that's, that's the key. The venting is fine because sometimes we have to release the steam valve because if we don't let the pressure off, that also can cloud our judgment. And then that can also keep us from moving forward into action, right? So the key is how long are you venting for though? Right, event, you know, a few minutes, yeah, sure, totally. But if you find yourself venting to 12 or 15 people all day long, mm, is that really venting or are we complaining again? And if we find ourselves stuck in this vent for a long period of time without saying, okay, now I have to figure out what to do next, then we're complaining and we're allowing it to paralyze us. So the opportunity to vent is to let off some steam and then for you to be able to say, okay, so now what am I gonna do? It has to result in an action. It has to result in an actionable item or set of strategies that'll, that'll move you forward to figure it out. And that's not to say it's gonna be easy, but it's to figure it out, okay? So what are some of your thoughts? I love that you guys are here with me on Zoom. I wanna acknowledge Jill has something in the chat. Uh, that some people who are focused on complaining become blinded by the momentum of complaining. Yeah, they get they get caught up, right? That's what I mean by complaining as a garbage magnet. It just attracts more junk in your life. And if you, you know, you find that someone gets on that perpetual loop and if they get any kind of acknowledgement, it's just some fuel to it and they want to continue to 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 get your support, right? And I see that in quotes because some people who are chronic complainers um, may be using, this gets into another level of the conversation, but they may be using the complaining as a vehicle to get some sort of attention, validation, what have you. So yeah, that's a great point, Jill. Thanks for saying that. So, you know, I wanted to give you an opportunity to take some personal inventory this morning around this topic and to, to just ask yourself honestly, have I gotten stuck in a loop re recently where I'm focusing more on the problem and less on the solution? And how is that, and here's a great question then to write down if you want to work on this today, is, you know, how is that showing up in my life? Is it, is it causing me to miss opportunities? Is it shutting me down? Which can lead to so many other issues, right? Emotional shutdown can lead to physical shutdown. And, and so this complaining is such a distraction that we're cutting ourselves off from the real work that needs to be done. Now, what happens when you realize that this is really an issue or a problem for someone that you love in your life? Can anyone relate to that? Where you might say, you know, I don't know if this is so much my problem, but it's, it's definitely a problem for my partner or, you know, one of my children or someone, my mom or dad or someone that I'm really close to. And it's, it's tough, right? It's tough when that person is around. So um, I can't say I'm void of that either. Right, we all have those people that we love in our lives, but yet they're programmed to think differently than we do. And so, first and foremost, a couple tips is you have to love them, and you have to see them uh, for who they were created to be. So sometimes you have to take a moment and see them the way that their creator would see them. So you have to give them a little grace. And then you have to look at yourself and you have to say, okay, well, what do I need in this moment? What do I need anytime I speak to this person? And I'm sure it's gonna be boundaries. 
And I'm sure it's going to be some sort of a filter, right? Where you have to learn to not take a lot of their negativity or complaining uh, personally. And I would say it also takes uh, some restraint to not try to get into convincing them to, to look at it in a different way. Um, now, depending on the level of relationship, you might be able to say to that person, hey, have you ever thought about looking at it from a different perspective? Or another good question might be, well, what if, what if there was another option or what if that wasn't true, right? Now, it depends on who the person is. I know that if I, and I have tried to say this to my kids, and sometimes I get mom, just be my mom and not my coach, <laughs> which I don't know if there's a difference, right? Um, you have to decide like who that person is in your life. Can they handle the question? And are you willing to go there with them? And you know what? Depending on who that person is, sometimes it's okay to say, it's not my job to change this person. Uh, and the only thing I can control is how I respond to them. Because that is, that is within your power, right? Because the minute that we tell ourselves we don't have a choice, we've given up our power. And so in order for that complainer, that chronic complainer not to affect your happiness, um, you have to understand that first of all, they don't really have the power, only you have that power. Only you have the power to change the way you feel only you have the power to change the way you look at a situation. Only you have the power to allow someone else's thoughts and behavior and action to affect you. So realize that you are in control. Um, so again, I just thought this was such a timely conversation because I know that during the holidays, uh, a lot of things can come up that we could choose to focus on and be negative about or stressed about. Uh, and again, there's been a lot of events around us. Um, but remember that you can retrain your brain anytime you choose. You can change the way you think uh, and you can allow yourself to start to see things from a different perspective. So negativity um, can easily be changed into something much more opportunistic if you allow yourself to see it from a different vantage point. And if you need to vent, because you know what, stuff happens. Stuff happens, not everything goes according to plan. Sometimes you can be affected by things happening in the world. I get that. I mean, we don't, I don't choose to live with my head in the sand. However, I have to take a step back and say, okay, what can I do about that situation right now? If it's not in my control to change or to do something about it, then what does my complaining do to serve me and others around me? Remember, the world is not changed by your opinion. The world can be changed by your actions though and how you choose to contribute and how you choose to connect with people. That is how you, the world can change. And the, the slightest changes in your inner world can create big changes in your outer world. This is your inner world right up in here. That can make major impacts in your outer world. But when we choose to get stuck in the loop of complaining, then we're shutting things down. We're attracting more negativity in our world. We're missing out on the good things happening around us. We're missing out on opportunities. And if that becomes a chronic problem, then we're literally wiring our brain to be on that loop and to continue to find the negative or less than issues around us and not programming ourselves to be actionable results oriented people. So I trust somebody needed that message today uh, because I know I did this morning as a reminder. So before I let you go on to your day, are there any thoughts? And by the way, whenever you watch this later, my Facebook keeps, I'm, I had a problem with the live stream this morning. So I'll make sure you get the recording. Uh, so any thoughts or feedback from any of you or questions before uh, we go on to the rest of our day? No, no problem. I just always like to give you guys a chance to be heard. Well, thank you so much. Oh, I appreciate your comments in the chat. Thank you guys for being here and I wish you a wonderful day. And remember, focus on the solutions, not the problems. 
Great. Wonderful, Anna. Thank you so much. You're welcome. All right. I'll see you next Monday. Okay. Thanks, Have Anna. a great week. All right. Thanks, take care, everybody.